Welcome back. Appreciate you coming back. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about inflation. What is inflation? You may have heard economists or you know investors talking about charts and growth and price adjustments and everything and then they say adjusted for inflation. What's the economic growth adjusted for inflation? <laughs> well, what the heck is inflation? First of all, so so here's the defin definition of inflation. Inflation is more money or cash available in the system without the demand for said money or cash. All right, so basically, basically the Fed prints a whole bunch more money and puts it into circulation. Well, there's not necessarily demand for cash. Cash is a made up thing that we did, right? It's not similar to land or water or gold. It's not something that there's like a limited supply, it has an inherent value and uh, people want it. Cash is simply the mechanism we made up to trade those things, to trade goods and services. I'll trade you mine for yours, right? I'll give you my wheat, you give me your blacksmith services. We just made cash to make it easy for that so we don't have to carry big big purses of gold around or literal sacks of wheat right and it's like well you can come get your wheat later here's your ten dollars thank you for your services and we move on right so that's what cat cash doesn't have an inherent value well if we so we kind of de decided here's the value of money in relation to everything else what's the buying power of the dollar this dollar can buy so much right well, what if we just double the supply of the dollars? Well, then each dollar can buy half as much. That's inflation, right? So let me, let me go a little bit further on this. So first of all, you need to understand what the cost of living is. That's how much it costs to, base, to cover your basic needs, right? So the amount of money needed to cover basic expenses to live in a certain area over a certain amount of time. That's your cost of living. So. If your cost of living, um, so cost of living goes up in dollar values, but not necessarily uh, in its inherent value, right? So let's just say current situation is a house in your area costs $100,000. Average income is $50,000. Well, um, the Fed right now in 2021 is printing tons of money. So the Fed prints, let's say there's one trillion in circulation, the Fed prints three more trillion and hands it out to banks and people and businesses and everything. Well, now that we've got all this money going from bank to person to business to business, we've got people trading more money for more goods and services, but there's the same amount of goods and services being traded, just with more money. So basically every dollar is buying less, but we're trading more dollars. So all of a sudden incomes go up to a hundred thousand dollars and houses go up to two hundred thousand. So basically everyone's got the same standard of living. They just make way more money. They pay way more money and we have this inflation. That's that's inflation. The Fed put more money into the system, incomes went up, cost of living went up. Everything's still the same as far as buying power, as far as standard of living. It's just we're trading more dollars. That's the basic version of inflation. All right, guys, so this is the basics of inflation. Now, how much inflation is occurring over time? If you take a look at this chart, it varies every year, but inflation has kind of averaged about two or three percent over time if we knew that that would be the case forever it would be easier to sort of judge that make make uh, price increases as a business owner uh, adjust your income or your uh, cost of living accordingly however it varies based on so many factors in the economy we can get into those in another video but um, it's been historically about two and a half percent, which is why, like Warren Buffett says, they raise the cost for seized canning every year. Cost of inflation, basically. So they never make less value. They never get less value out of their chocolate. They always get 
get more money according to how much inflation has gone up. That's why a lot of people really like the gold standard because gold is a precious metal with some unique qualities. It's also very difficult to find and get into the system. We can't pump gold into the system faster than we can grow other areas of our economy and have real growth in business and development and technology and all that, that kind of stuff. So there's not really inflation with gold. But since the Fed controls the money, how much is in circulation, they can print, they can print as much as they want out of thin air. They, if you haven't seen my video, where does stimulus money come from? Go check that out. I'll put the link here. You can check that video out. It'll explain how they just produce money. But that causes all of us out in the world to have to try and guess like how much money's out there, what kind of inflation we're going to experience, and what to do with our investments. When people move their investments, it causes these like big spikes in, in prices but it's just because of they're trying to mitigate their risk in this area, right? So right now there seems to be a, a migration to gold, to foreign accounts, um, things like that. So if you think we're going to experience hyperinflation, you don't wanna hold on to a lot of cash because the cash is gonna become worth less, literally worth less, right? Uh, so you want it in something that can adjust for inflation or will hold its inherent value. So a lot of people trying to get gold because they think, okay, gold is going to hold its value, cash is going to lose its value. That means the price of gold will go up in relation to the price of the dollar. I hope this helped under help with your understanding of inflation. Um, if it did, please give me the, the like, subscribe, all the things a YouTuber asks for. <laughs> and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.